2019 meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission to order, and if the administrator would call the roll. Hank Begelman? Yep. Kate Payne? Here. Richard Dane? <clears throat> Mary French? Stephanie Garner? Here. Lance Graters? Here. David, is it Huser? Huser. Yeah. Huser. David Huser. Kathy Olson? Heidi Solheim? Here. Okay, you have the agenda before you, and uh, if we could have a motion that it be approved as printed. I'll motion approval of the agenda as printed. I'll second that. Okay, we have motion and second. Any other discussion? If not, those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. And the agenda is approved as printed. Let's go to the minutes of the uh, August 1st meeting of the commission. Any uh, additions, corrections on that? So I have one, and I don't know if it's okay to me, for me to make additions yeah. or changes to it for the hospital <laughs> review. I just wanted to clarify, I think I may have said seven additions to the hospital. There's actually only five additions to it. Okay. Um, and then it looks like it's almost not complete at the end. It just finishes with Bagelman thanks. So I didn't know if there was more <laughs> statement that was going to be added there or... Probably, yeah. Okay, so that was all. Why, why don't we um, why don't we look to approve it uh, with edits, and then if you and Isaac could get together, Heidi, and we'd just get the language for the final copy that goes to the city, that would be. That, you maybe could just stop it right after, unless there was more information you felt was needed. I don't know that any more content really. Is needed. I'd say whatever the make it a complete sentence. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 strike the, or strike the two words yeah. off either two. We can like so. the, like the video. <laughs> really it, easy it, to do. It's yep. high trust. I mean, if the two yeah. of you get together, I know it's going to be okay. So, does that make sense? Go ahead. Okay. Any other additions, corrections? Okay. Hearing none, we do need a motion. So moved. And a second? Second. Here we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed, yes. no. And the minutes of the August meeting are approved as edited. Why don't you, for the record, uh, acknowledge that David came in before the vote? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, really no, so, so that it goes in the record. Yeah, right in the okay. record is voting, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, first item on the agenda tonight, <laughs> under regular business, to review and recommend approval of preliminary and final plat of Nutrien, am I pronouncing that correctly? Correct. Nutrien subdivision, including lots one, two, and three. And Isaac, if we could turn it over to you. Yes, so um, this, these three proposed lots are currently split into two lots um, right now. They're being operated by Nutrien Ag. Um, they are uh, presenting this preliminary and final plat to split into the three lots. Um, lot one of this uh, proposed subdivision would go to standard nutrient. Is that the company that's called? Well, just be standard um, milling. Nutrition. Standard milling. Okay. Um, and then lots two and three would stay under the ownership of Nutrien Ag. Uh, lot two, uh, lot one and two both have uh, buildings on it currently. That's kind of why, um, like the western um, uh, property line of lot two is kind of um, curved and kind of funky looking. Um, it's splitting where the buildings are. And then lot three currently has uh, nothing developed on it. Um, Nutrien is planning on in the future possibly developing on it. Um, right now, there's no concrete plans for that lot. Um, from a staff perspective, uh, we have reached out to Nutrient. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but they have 200 foot setbacks on uh, the western and easternmost prop uh, proposed property lines of lot three. Those are the property lines that are abutting residential zones. They have 200 foot setbacks there. Um, they're only required to be 75. So we've reached out to them to kind of uh, get some idea of why they decided to do 200. Um, 200, obviously, it meets the required setback, but they don't have to be um, that far back from the property line. So uh, staff's recommendation is to um, uh, uh, 
approve the preliminary and the final plats for the nutrient subdivision. Any comments, questions? I know that lot three is intended to be accessed off of 39th Street. That was that, that, so we didn't have too much development going through into into an unprotected intersection in front of the where that already is. So I think that was one of the that's why we had them split it into lot two and three mm -hmm. instead of having just one big lot. The other question I'd have is we talked about those residential lots when we were looking at property to the east uh, last month, but are all six of those occupied or is there a vacant lot in there? There's, um, I thought there were only four homes and there's mm -hmm. two, I think, that are built in two lots. <coughs> okay. If I remember rightly. Here. Ah, uh, yes. So last month, uh, was it the implement right. dealership? Was on, is that on the other side of 39th? Yes. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that the, six acres in the south east corner of the Hannah Walt Farms property. Okay. That's the plat H, I think it was parcel H. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Other comments, questions? And just to clarify too, the, um, the sewer project that we are going to bid and, and install will go, um, will extend it from the waterway, which is the west line of the lot one. There's a waterway that comes through mm -hmm. and that's where the uh, sanitary sewer is right now. Um, it will be extended in the Highway 3 right of way, across, underneath 39th and then on the east side of 39th, up to kind of across from that 66 foot connection that lot three has to 39th Street. So they'll, they'll be accessing, they can access uh, the sewer, access the sewer there, or they can <coughs> access it on the far back corner of that lot three, where it is in the, in the, um, in that uh, waterway. And then lot two does not have its own service and so they'll be able to connect to the sewer on lot two. Very good. Do we have a motion? Just got one question. Is there anything as far as, you know, that lot two is there's a lot of hazardous you know, stuff as far as chemicals, you know, because that's where I think their um, depot is for their filling their spray tanks. Or is there anything that has to be dealt with there at all? I, I don't know. It, it, they have a wet building and a, and a dry building. Yep, yep. Um, they indicated that they were going to keep that operation uh, in that location. Um, it's always been there. I don't know if there's any, I mean, I assume that there's. I don't know if there's any regulation for that. Well, it's I, not I, like know, I know. I know. We ran a propane to it across the road there. You know, when Dilbo wanted to do the tanks, and there became an issue, and, and maybe that's why that that 200 foot setback is it with the residents there. Maybe that is why that they heard some of that there. And I just didn't know if there's that. That could be. In fact, that's what we may want to look at that because I think that's what that was in the tanks, wasn't it? For yeah, I think I think so. But I, but I just know we had both dry and wet depots there, and so I just didn't know if there's anything special you have to worry about with the, you know, there's still the land uh, to the east of that that's owned by uh, Dave Byer, I think. Uh, yep, the two, two lots. So is there anything that has to be dealt with a setback there, you know, in case whatever, something that happens with Dave? I think those two lots were, were um, are they, I, I C2, they were. aren't they? I, I was thinking they're C2. Are they? Okay. I just didn't know. They weren't the M1, or the M2. This, this is an actual M2, which is which allows them to do the chemicals and things because yeah. that's... Okay, well, I just thought so you are just on top of it then, okay. Yeah, we, we didn't have a chance to find out from the surveyor why he had used the 200-foot setback. Um, we're just going to make sure that the setback fits what it's supposed to fit because we don't want them to over setback themselves. Yeah. Um, and then bring it on back in later, it would depend on whatever they would develop that, that yeah. we'd have to change it again. I mean, it's... Well, we, yeah, again, we want to we want to do whatever the law is, and we don't want to have them impose a 200 foot when it's only 75. Yeah, no, I, I mean I agree. You know, so. they have to go back and redo it sometime when it's only 75. So, if we approve the motion as typed here, we're saying that it's okay with the 200 foot. 
we, we didn't, since we, since we had to, we scrambled to put this on because they really asked to have this done so we, we could get it done in October. We'll make sure that the corrected version and we'll let the council know that there was a question about whether the setbacks were appropriate and we're gonna make sure that those are appropriate. Um, again, it, it's really much more restrictive than we think it needs to be. Sure. And if it, it, so this is the most restrictive it could be. And so if it's only 75, like we think it might be, um, and, and, and that the, the, the 200 foot. Um, it just seems weird to approve the final plat if it's not really the final plat because the setbacks are wrong. But so we could amend that statement. It would just say subject yeah. to. Yes, qualifying the, yeah, making sure that the, we've corrected the, whatever the, the applicable setbacks are. I, that's why I thought rather than wait a month because trying to wait a whole month for this group to meet again to do it puts us out another month. And I think it's just really clarifying the setbacks. The setbacks don't always have to be on there either. We prefer that they show them because they can change. And if you set them in the plat and then they change, it, you, you use the setbacks that are on the plat. So in some respects, um, the easements we want on there and they have put those on there, but the, uh, the, the setbacks are something that is nice to have, but it isn't critical. Is it possible the setbacks that are listed there are what's on the original plat or the current? Because it looks like it runs all the way down um, through lot one. And maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. Or maybe they just squared it up because of that reason. And that's why but it's not what the current setbacks are from the current drawings? The, they don't currently have those setbacks on the, the existing two lots. Um, so. I, I guess I, I don't know okay. a good way to answer that question. Um, the existing two lots also have a um, multi-lot agreement. That means they can't um, sell parts of them without us approving. So with the approval of the plat and the council's approval of the plat, that multi-lot agreement would be removed and would no longer be effective. We want to make sure that they, that they had one lot here when Schneider's owned it. So they, and they had it two different lots. So instead of making them platted at that time, we allowed them to basically combine them uh, under an agreement. So that the city, by, by, by your action, and actually by the council's action, when, if and when they approve the final plat, would sever that agreement and basically make that agreement no longer exist. And we'll probably put in language to that effect in the resolution um, on the council level approving that the multi-lot agreement would be null and void upon the Mr. approval of the plan, the filing of the plan. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Plan Zoning Commission recommend the approval of the preliminary and final plan of nutrient subdivision to the City Council subject to the review by staff regarding this 200 foot setback instead of the 75 foot setback, which is all is required. Second. Do we have a motion and a second? Any further discussion? You ready to vote? Okay, those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed, no. And the motion is carried. Next item is the discussion that we began <coughs> several meetings ago in, in the last meeting. It's a um, review and recommendation on ordinance amendment to the zoning chapter 100, sections 100.13, that's C2, and 100.15, that's M1. So the links are not working for me. Me either. Yeah, that's that, that's why we're, we're going to oh, put this on. And then you if you want to see something, I'll put it on, and you can flip okay. over to your... To your screen, I, I started with I started, I started with the agenda memo, um, and then um, we can introduce the topic and basically whatever you want to look at, I'll put on the on the screen. We didn't realize that was happening tonight until okay. we got here. Right. 
Well, I think it starts off with the summary statement. Staff is recommending changes in both districts to clarify that warehouses and buildings containing self-storage units should be in M1 and not C2. So let's start the discussion. Isaac, you or Bill? Um, so, yeah, like you said, um, staff's recommending uh, only allowing the um, warehousing and uh, storage type uh, uses in an M1 industrial zone and not to, uh, C2 um, commercial zones. Um, staff believes that uh, storage it doesn't necessarily fit uh, the intent of a C2 zone. Um, C2 zones, uh, in staff's opinion, are more meant for high traffic, uh, traffic coming in on a more regular basis than um, something of the nature of a storage. Um, and it, we feel that the storage fits more of an industrial zone. Um, we've attached the memo from West Des Moines uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. They kind of echo those uh, same feelings. So um, unless Bill's got anything else, uh, staff's recommendation is to uh, move the Planning and Zoning Commission and recommend approval of uh, the ordinance amendment to the zoning chapter sections 100.13 and 100.15 to the City Council. Mm -hmm. This is one of those where, from time to time, there are going to be some anomalies where things just better fit in one than the other, in spite of the fact that overall, doing this is probably a good move. And how, how, how might we handle that? Is that something where we just make a special uh, consideration when, when those things come up? If, if um, we talked about um, in the situation where there might be um, part of the commercial property that's C2 that may not be um, developable uh, readily by um, retail and things that have high volume usage along, let's say, on a 4th Street or somewhere, and they could be a rear part of that area. Um, that might lend itself to filling in with, with uh, self-storage units um, or other types of things. And then you have the combined um, uh, retail businesses that have a storage component to their building. And so the question we talked about was whether we should allow some warehouse storage use or self-storage use upon a special provisional use ap application. Because certainly... If you're looking at it being right adjacent with a retail and you have retail, 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 then a, a mini storage uh, group, um, it's not really what we want to see in that C2 district. But if you have a back parcel that isn't very accessible to the, to the highway and it's still C2, you still have the option of trying to rezone that to an M1 and then it feels like a little bit of spot zoning because you have this whole C2, C2 and then you have this strip of, of M1. I think those are relatively compatible for that reason if they're kind of behind, but it may be better handled with a special provisional use within C2. So there were some concerns I think raised in the prior two discussions we've had about this that maybe we should be considering not a complete ban from storage units in C2, but maybe a provisional use type provision. And that could be added probably very simply. Because we already we already did that and where we added a special provisional use for indoor, inside or indoor access self-storage units. We could actually add um, maybe a provision that said something about um, considering a special provisional use for a um, mini storage units. Um, and we'd have to maybe define what the circumstances would be for that. Um, not necessarily the prime location right in front of the, you know, on, on adjacent to the street, but if there were por portions of the property that made sense 
for that kind of a development. And then I'm worried about a little bit, you know, you talk about the identifying the kinds of things that are in C2, and one of them is like a furniture store. Well, furniture stores mostly have warehouse type facilities, and they may have a separate one somewhere else, but a lot of times they have warehouse facilities on site, at least some warehouse facilities on site. So if, if you'd say to them, well, you can have your retail shop, but you can't have your st warehouse, you'd still be doing it by a special provisional use because there may be, well, we're gonna let you have a little bit of storage, but your main big giant storage facility may have to be somewhere else. Um, Could you go back to the other side of this page? Yeah. So I think I may have missed the very first discussion if it was two meetings ago. Um, I guess for me, like for number six, all of those being struck out of there, to me, they're the same as number three. Really the same type of establishment. Because really, if you look at for the car lots, really they're warehouses out in the parking lot in a way. I just, I would really question like a lumber yard seems like a perfect C2 as far as people coming and going. Um, I feel like we've really restricted those businesses, and to me, they're C two businesses. That's the that's the dilemma in my mind yeah. because um, you, you know lumber yards are a lot of storage and a lot of um, you know traffic with, with <clears throat> semis and, and different things that we're trying to keep out of a, a retail district that we want people to come into a, a retail store or. A, those kinds of establishments. It, 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 it's not necessarily inconsistent, but that's where you look at, if you look at a four street, because that's what our example is, and you look at what, you, what would be allowed, um, and you look at the Titan property probably at this point, and we're probably calling that now an M1 um, because it would be more of a storage building or a, a, a building that, that um, has large vehicles and, and that kind of thing, and it doesn't really lend itself to frequent um, traffic going in and out, that type of thing. Um, so how do you account, how do you, I mean, if you have a Menards uh, next to C2, I mean, it seems to make sense because it's in a C, you, you want that in a C2 district. I, I don't know, I, I was yeah. mostly focusing on the story, the mini storage units, as opposed to those kinds of units, and maybe, Maybe we don't delete that section, and we just, um, and maybe we have to call out the mini storage being something that we want in M1. I mean, we put it in M1. That's the other amendment. I don't think we have to not we take it out of C2 because I still think it doesn't really lend itself to a C2 use. I think the the main main difference here that staff sees is that the what the use is like. Uh, you know, an automobile shop or a lumber yard or something like that, the storage of the parts are incidental to the use of the building. Yeah. Their primary where, business is retail. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. where a, a mini storage, the whole business is storage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not buying anything else. Mm -hmm. um, so from from that standpoint, that's kind of where we're, we're separating those two things on that basis. Uh, the mini storage, we feel, is an industrial. If it's incidental to the retail use of a building, then it, we're allowing that in a C2, so. And I fully support the mini storage. I feel like this just went a whole big step or past that. And if I look within our community, it seems like we would have many businesses that probably aren't in the right zoning than it currently. So there is some language in there that may be confusing then. I, I see what you mean by carpenter and cabinet shops, lumber yards, building material, sales yard, sheet metal shop, sign construction, painting shop, but then you get to storage warehouse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some of those business. I think are okay to, I mean, that's kind of what we were talking about. And wholesale warehouse or business. So both of those things are kind of a, um, I mean, I, I want to take out the language of th things that are just storage or whether it be mini or large scale. I just think of like, we have a business downtown that her primary thing is really storage and resell in the back. And so she's almost like a warehouse. Although the two thirds of that building is the retail shop. I mean, it's really incidental to sure. Yeah, I just think we went too yeah. far with the whole section six or item six being struck down. Well, you could see. But I may be, I'm yeah. still understanding some of the different aspects of this, so I may be 
off on that. So maybe you would t you you'd suggest which ones we might want to keep and which ones we might want to get rid of, and st and keep it that way. I mean, if I think you, you're going, you know, I don't know for sure, but you know, you start trying to pick and choose who you're going to have in there. You might forget about certain ones or go too far and. And you're going to have some people upset. I, I think of you talked about mini storage. What about like a Green Acres? I mean, that's pretty classy. Where it's all done inside. The traffic comes in. They unload inside. There, you know. I mean, I don't have any problem with that in a you know in a C2 area because it's. I mean, I shouldn't. I don't know. Maybe classy is not the word, but it's very professionally. Um, uh, and everything is inside. It isn't like you got people unloading stuff outside or. And then I think of two guys um, where they got storage in the back end, and most of that is storage more so than retail. So, I mean, you, you kind of end up... Uh, well, those two examples are really... I mean, we did put the special provisional use for the first one because if you have indoor storage that... Yeah, I know that, but I mean, but yeah. somebody may say, okay, why are you separating that? You know, I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, the, it may be a fine line there. I, I don't know, but I just... I think you could create some problems for this group sometime down the road that on when you go to the uh, special provisional use and somebody. I, I don't know. I mean, I just think that sometimes when we've fought through those things that people get uh, a little testy about that. But. Well, you could, I mean, if, if you really just, uh, the wholesale storage <laughs> business, that's the part that I don't like to be in, in C2. So there's a few items on that number six I think we could take out. So wholesale, so Martin Brothers came for a cash and carry. That would be considered more of a wholesale. They're selling more to businesses. It does have retail too. So it, it, that would maybe exclude them. Except that that would be a, it, there would be a retail component to that because they would be inviting the public to come by at their resale. I mean, at their retail location. I, it's I, not, I don't understand what's driving this really. What, what, what's the problem with the mini storage next to a bowling alley or a furniture store? Um, do, do you want your corridors lined with storage units? I mean, that's kind of one of the things. That so it's about the architecture. It's about it's somewhat, the visual impact. Somewhat, somewhat the visual impact, but also it, it takes those away from the ability to use those for uh, prime real, uh, re retail locations. But what's listed here isn't like retail in the sense of I'm going shopping and going to the next door and then going to the next door. All of these places are I'm going to the vet and then I'm going home. I'm going to the furniture store, and then I'm going home. This isn't like a, I'm going to wander down the street and kind of shop, shop in every store kind of a neighborhood. Yeah. So I don't see where the mini storage really dramatically affects being included in this C2 district. I mean, I guess I just don't see where it has any dramatic difference from what's already allowed in this list. How do you look at like a two guys for you know the the storage in that? How would you would you say that that doesn't belong in a? Well, no, i i and I'd look at that first and say, well, for, first of all, it, it, it the that Tenth Avenue development should be really considered a C one because that's kind of what it was intended. No, I know that I'm not. But, but the C two part that in, in, in a right, C but, but the C two I think. The primary purpose is to have a retail establishment so they can sell the things at their store and back in the, in the back. And so I think it's okay to do that. I would argue that a, a new storage unit building, a mini storage, <laughs> maybe even looks better than the Norby's building if it's about the way it looks. I don't think that there's any dramatic impact in the way it's used or difference between the way it's used. I guess you haven't convinced me that there's a dramatic problem with the mini storage. I just don't see it yet, so you can keep telling me, but. <laughs> I'm reflecting what some people, I mean, what, what people feel at times that, and, and we talk about corridor planning, and I know there's been discussions in this group before I was even involved about how our corridors look and how, they, how, how they're I don't Populated. think keeping a mini storage out of 4th Street is going to make 4th Street all of a sudden look like a well-planned street. I mean, I think that ship sailed. Well, Actually, I think, I think 4th Street looks pretty good compared to, I mean, with, with Titan now 
uh, you know, leaving you know with that from that location, that could really turn that over into retail because that used to be on the outside of town, and so things develop around things that you can't help. But when they're gone, it could be replaced by something that's completely different, and and that's the kind of thing that. I, I probably don't like the, the C2 description anyway because it, you just start throwing out things that are okay and I don't think some of these things make really... I mean, hard. all of the things on this list are kind of... I'm using a lot of real estate to make this thing happen. Yeah. No matter what you do. Yeah. Every one of them. I mean, Except most of drinking establishment, those could be small. Most of this was done in the 40s and 50s and 60s. This is all language from... That, but that I, era. I guess I just don't see where just keeping the mini storages out of here is going to really help this make a situation like Fourth Street get fixed. I think it's going to be a way bigger problem than just keeping the mini storages out. <clears throat> Does the cost of the real estate, you know, when you get a quarter like you're talking about, the cost per square foot makes probably mini stories. Um, Maybe you know, not practical. Pra yeah, practical. Yeah. I mean, you know, cost prohibitive. Yeah, cost prohibitive. So I, I you know, that's why I'm trying to think through yep. the corridor. Did look at the east side. The east side, then the, the, the development across from Star Motel on that side. Um, yeah. With the with a large capacity storage units, mm -hmm. basically warehousing. I mean, does it belong in C2 along our corridor that uh, uh, it's supposed to be an urban retail corridor? I mean. Again, there's, you know, what, what do you want in front of those? I'm not saying I want one. Don't no. misunderstand me. I'm just saying that I don't think that it's appreciably different than, you know, a standalone commercial ball field, swimming pool, skating, and driving range. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's not helping make it be a well-conceived corridor for retail. And, and I think what, what you end up doing then is, in my mind, is you're, we're combining C2 and M1 and it doesn't really matter which one we use because there's got to be a distinction between a commercial retail corridor or property as opposed to a industrial, light industrial type, warehouse type district. And we don't have a good division between those two uses. So we're really just free for all in, you can be about, it's about anything at this point now. It's almost like we have to call out things we don't want in some of these things because the old descriptions, I, we're, we're talking about throwing it all out and looking at different ways that other people do commercial descriptions. Because this, this idea that we can put in ballrooms and dance halls, I mean, we got a lot of those around now. And you look at some of these older fun. ones that are, <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, monument sales yards, don't they go next to the, the, the I, I, I don't I know. This is I mean, I just feel like the whole thing is kind of anachronistic and odd. Yeah. And we're piecemeal addressing this thing and not really getting to the crux of the issue. Right, and that's, I guess that's what I'm trying to do, and I'm not sure we're artful in doing it because we've left a lot of these things in that are, that are ambiguous and, and leave our, our descriptions kind of out there. Um, I mean, what, what do you think of as a commercial district adjacent to an um, arterial-type road? What should it look like? Retail. And so what shouldn't be there? I mean, Warehouse. And, and what should be there is retail that requires a lot of vehicle traffic coming and going. Um, that's where we want them on our arterials. We don't want something that somebody could drive to once a, once a month to be in a place where we could have things that people are driving to every day and multiple times. That's, that's kind of what we were looking at. And storage units and, and storage facilities and warehouses are more in an industrial type use and industrial type district. So how do we separate those? And maybe we have to go back to the drawing board about descriptions because I, I understand. Well, I mean, I would say that I, I agree with Heidi. I mean, I think a lumber yard is mostly a retail endeavor. It just has a storage component to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, years ago we designed C2A because we couldn't agree on what should be in C2. You know, so maybe we go to the, I mean, I'm, I'm not 
I mean, but yeah, we did. We created C two A because of actually C two A. I think was created just to make the front frontages shorter because. These right. were designed along high, highways, and so you had the frontages be like 50 foot back. And C28 cuts it down to 25, so you can actually get people closer to the arterial. It, this started with uh, where, um, you know, where Godfather used to be, which is uh, uh, Dirty Dog. Dirty Dog. That's where it started that whole thing there at that time. But yeah, I mean, that's what we ended up doing some of that, trying to make piecemeal, and that's what we're talking about here. And, I'm just trying to say, okay, is there a way to, to design this so it's, it gets the what you know, want to have, and then the other one is that, and then you try to figure out, okay, how do we um, put this all together? Because you have C2 is like a highway retail where you're back off 50 feet off the, the right of way, whereas you have a lot of retail and, C, and commercial that wants to be as close to the road as it can, not necessarily, you know, and well, so that's inconsistent too, and and. Well, it, all, it all started because there wasn't code, and back in the fifties and in the sixties, they designed and tried to make it fit with what was there, and, and so we didn't have anything years ago, and so it, and that now we gotta have to try to figure out how to to make it work. I, you know. So what I'm hearing you say, Bill, is you basically are kind of seeing a somewhat antiquated. Description. Oh, I think I, I think it's clearly that way. Yeah. I mean, because we're not be totally opposed to going back to the drawing board and redoing. And I'm kind of hearing Kate say she kind of feels the same way. Yeah, I just don't think what we're doing is really addressing the issue that we're right. trying to get to. Instead of band aid, go back and so at least bring the, it up to 2020. Yeah. At least what we're we're trying to do is take a few examples and make it specific. That where we want it. So if you talk about warehouses and and pure storage facilities, whether they be big or small, we want the M1 district. And beyond that, disagree with that. I and, mean, I, what's that? I don't disagree that storage itself is different than retail. I'm not arguing that. And maybe that number six, I was a little bit strong with how many things I I lined out because maybe all we had to line out was the, the storage and the wholesale storage. And then basically make that clear that it's in M1 as an example in M1. Well, the other thing that's confusing in that stricken paragraph of number six is a carpenter and cabinet shop. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean a place shop? A showroom for kitchen cabinets, or does it mean we're a manufacturing kitchen cabinets? And if, you, Again, if it's, it's a little clear. shop, it's a shop that somebody used to make little things, and and and, and it was probably more of a mixed uh, retail and, and and shop. Again, now it doesn't really describe what we see now. We don't see little cabinet shops, and they probably most likely are going to be in the industrial district instead of in the yeah, retail corridor. So manufacturing, which is why I just kind of took the whole number six out just for that reason. And I think there's some other ones that maybe you could take out, but again, I I think that was the most logical, and that's why I just moved it over to the M1. I, I, the other thing is M1 and C2. Can be, can be blended because you can have M1 behind C2. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of times you have this layering and that kind of thing. So the question might be, well, what if we want, have a location that's good for an M1 on the back side of a C2, and it, right now it's C2. Do we do we say you have to rezone it, and somebody's going to claim it's spot zoning because you put this slice of M1 right behind the C2? Although I think that'd be consistent. You know, spot zoning is is putting a M1 in the middle of the residential district. You know, and, and I think it's a little different when you have somewhat compatible uses that could be together and, and it's layered. It's pretty easy to imagine a retail outlet where Walker, she or salvage it is was um, along Fourth Street, and then behind it be it could be hundreds of storage units, and I don't know that anybody would really. Certainly, Complain. and it's and it's M1 right now, or it's M2. I think I, it's either it's an industrial zone now. But the front piece. But we would we would want to change the front piece, and anybody coming there is going to want to change the front piece because Walmart will allow access off their road to that frontage, but they won't allow it to the rest of the property. So it, it, it's really designed to be a perfect C2 use on the front because of that additional access. And that's what will happen when somebody wants to divide that property up, is what will happen.
and there's a couple. There's another use there that, that the old Carmi um, property that has kind of multiple the old uh, marina type. Isn't there a buildings yeah. there that? Okay. And then you have some storage buildings. You got a warehouse, little thing. You got a house. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be it'll be. And somebody may come in and say, I want to put some retail on the front, and I want to put another use on the back, and that would be something that you could do almost with a planned development because you could basically do two different zonings on the same property. I, you know, I would be happy, I, you know, this is really kind of with the storage unit and the, and the warehouse units, you know, our C2 corridors mm -hmm. along arterial streets. And that's the one thing I just wanted to make clear that, that we're really focused on in this. It wasn't to be an all over review of C2, which maybe is due at some point. Um, and a lot of times what we look at is we try to look at, you, you don't find very many cities that have changed theirs and it looks just like ours because it was codified by the same company. So you, you see a lot of people kind of just leaving that out there. And um, that's why West Des Moines, when I saw that, that West Des Moines had said, we want to kind of change that to, to get those storage units out of those areas where um, they don't seem to belong and for the reasons they stated. And I think we had the same feelings. This has been a healthy discussion. Where do we want to go from here <laughs> tonight? I feel like if we're going to recommend a change like this to the city council, we have to be like all in. Yeah, this is what we're looking senses. for. And I don't know that. And it's like, yeah, we can do it. Would it be helpful if a couple of us would go and meet with staff and have this dialogue and try to get it sorted out? It doesn't seem like we're terribly far apart philosophically. It's. Uh, I guess I feel like, is it almost worth doing right now? Or do we need to say, OK, what is our plan to look at an overview of all of the different zoning classification yeah, and address that. I mean, does is it like this decision has to be made this month because there's something that's impacting it, or is it we could do it? Does it really impact anything right now, or should we table it, have a full review of these in the next year, <coughs> and go through the full process instead of? Except we're going to go through because this will have to go to the city council for more than one reading. Sure. And, I don't know. I, I, I mean, one of the things I was, it, it was kind of a little bit of a stopgap because there were some properties we were concerned about what they would end up with. Um, and we thought it was inconsistent with what the plan that for the rest of the property um, behind it or around it. And so we were really addressing this for these, these warehouse type and storage unit type concerns. So putting those in and identifying those as being an M1 use helps us do that. Um, if, if you would leave things in, I'd almost like to leave it in as a, as a special provisional use where it may be appropriate. So if you say there's a storage unit or warehouse facility that might make sense in the current C2 because of where it's located and how it's accessed and all that, it could be come, come before this group to rec make recommendations and then be approved at the city council level as a special provisional use for that reason. Because it would normally be housed in M1, but we could still consider it in C2 under the appropriate circumstances. So that's what I would probably then do is take these ones that I've taken out and put those in the special provisional use category. Bill, how would this fit in? You know, next year we're going to be going full, full blast with a comprehensive land use plan. Is this the kind of thing that small group as part of that process takes on this and in the meanwhile we use the common sense that came out of this discussion in dealing with those items that may come along but really make it a priority issue to get resolved when we do the master plan i, I think so i mean when i look at the the um, comprehensive use plan i I'd, I'd like to see us identify M, M1 and M2 locations because we haven't done that. I think that's something that would help the, the situation because if we're only doing commercial and residential or mixed use between the two, 
it's not really addressing where we want industrial and, 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 and light industrial type uses. And I think that's where that map should have another color. Well, and I think people have said to us we need to have more specificity in, in this than we have now. We use kind of a broad stroke. And, uh, I don't want to make it a zoning map, but it, it sort of is to some, to, to some extent. And you know, you're right about because C3, you identify what really should be C3 because that has different rules downtown than C2 because that's no setbacks and there's some special things that happen with that. You don't want to get that too far outside of your main street. And then you look at C2, you're really trying to keep that adjacent to your corridors and your arterials. Right. Um, and then you want to find areas that are good for uh, industrial type uses, whether it be warehousing and, because um, you have the M1 and the M2. The M2 are really heavy, heavy industrial type places. But you got the light industrial assembly type things. I mean, we kind of struggle a little bit with that with UEA. They're not what I, I mean, they're probably an M2 use, but they're sort of an M1 too because it's clean. It doesn't, there's no smog and, and, and effects. And, and they do describe it that way. M2 is like there's processes that might result in air or other things that, that are sound or that kind of thing. And so they certainly aren't that because they're, they're self-contained and they're quiet and, and they're great neighbors. So we should be kind of identifying that M1 territory that we want to see M1 um, develop in. Um, and I think we can do that with you know, warehouse type areas. I mean, I think I'm okay. I, I, I think I s understand better why you're doing it, and I think it makes some sense to, because we're trying to be future looking, mm -hmm. we're trying to look down the road to take some of these things that may have big warehousing components attached to retail and potentially put them in a provisional use kind of a thing. Right, right. So we can make the decision if it's, if it, is it really a warehouse with a tiny little office? Or is it a nice retail, like the, the, the uh, two guys is a, is a retail establishment. It, it clearly needs to be on a retail corridor, but yet it has the component of a warehouse. And in some of those situations, I know other places might say, you have to have your warehouse somewhere else. You just have to go get things out of your warehouse some, in a different location. And they allow for some kind of warehousing um, well, on, on site. You think of like a new home <coughs> store as kind of, it has a retail component. I can go buy boxes, but it also has a fairly significant kind of warehouse, and so often mini storage associated with them. Yeah, and I, which I, is kind of a weird mix yeah, of all things. And a lot of equipment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but. And, and I even say, you know, look at number three, and it says um, implement dealers, implement establishments. And they really lend themselves more to be not on the main corridor. I would, I mean, we because probably, access in and out is, is so difficult. So P and K and and Titan have a, have a hard time because when they're bringing their products out into the street, they're having a hard time on our on our retail heavy they were arterial just corridor. Built at a different time. Yeah. No. And and they they were built out of town at the time too. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, that's what you have to look at is they were they were built appropriately at the time. It's just, everybody's kind of growing around them. Well, they didn't have 30 foot heads, the combines yeah. and 40 foot heads. <laughs> yeah, small tractors and, you know, yeah. It's getting smaller. Yeah. I, I don't know. We were trying to address the, the limited issue that were posed by pure storage buildings and the mini, mini storage, storage acres of, of mini storage type of thing. So if that's what we're we're thinking that we're willing to make that change, I would propose that instead of striking out carpenter through painting shop, I would start with the strike out from storage warehouse or business through the end of that sentence. I, I, I agree with you. That okay. gets just more to the point of what the request yeah. is and that can go into the M1. And then we've changed the M1, because so I think I just added that same paragraph into that. We just take those out of the M1 and leave those in. Switch that part. Okay. Well, I think you made a good point with three. I mean, if you're going to do that, three ought to come out of two, probably. Yeah. I but mean, you also remove truck, because... I, I mean, I mean, right, it's when you really so start looking at that, know. you know, you brought it up yourself, Bill, that maybe... Um, 
I mean, in an ideal world, the implement place wouldn't be on 4th Street now. We right. choose to not let that happen again. But now the new one's on Highway 3 East on the very edge of town. And For in now. 20 years, you might see how many yeah. different areas yeah. around it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll be faced with that again. Well, it's now on a, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, but that's but they don't want to be two miles out of town either. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they want to be on the edge of town, but well, there's a retail component for yeah. you know. There's, People we can are buy there too parts. for lawn tractor yeah. stuff. It's not. I don't want to well, B and K is different than Titan because I think B and K has yeah. much more consumer oriented yeah. uh, home, re residential oriented type equipment, and so they certainly have that retail <laughs> component up front. They they have an uh, the, a store that's wonderfully positioned where it should be. It's then when you get to the the, the other part of their business, which is the giant. Um, Vehicles, and but it also speaks to the. I mean, I know this sounds a little bizarre, but it speaks to the history of Iowa. I mean, Iowa. They all have implement town. Every town has an implement place. We still have John Deere, right? The John Deere group is still here. Yeah. So what, okay, PNK. they're still. That's PNK. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, they're right. And, and you know, like I said, we, we want them to be here. I mean, yeah. it's not that we. We're just saying that things have grown around them, so that if they were to have this space and say we want to move here, would we want them there? I mean, that's a different question because there may be a more appropriate location for them access-wise and those kinds of things because yeah, they certainly have sense. difficulty getting in and out with their big equipment. Um, they do that under the cover of like 4 a.m. Exactly. I mean, that, and that, I mean, that's what that stuff. And it makes sense yeah. for them, and they do. They don't really hold up things, and they're they're great about that. It's not like they cause problems in, in during the day. Um, I would never say that they do that. They they do a great job of avoiding that kind of thing. Until they come down 4th Street with their heads on and blocking two lanes of traffic, you know, that's... Uh, yeah, people have to wait a little while. That doesn't happen that often, but I've seen it out there, uh, you know. I just say I've never seen it. Oh, yeah, I've seen they it. Do it, it, it has yeah. never been thus, right? And, and that's only because they're going very short distances with their... Most of the time, they're going to put them on trailers and take off the wheels and, and move yeah. them and then reassemble them so somewhere the else. farmers bring them in, they come off a 29th, you know, they come in the yeah. back way and... But that's a very small number of people that are doing that. I think we don't see them that often. And no, but it does happen. It does. Mm -hmm. yeah, it does happen. But I think I agree with Dave that if we're going to try and clean this up to make it be what we want, do we want an implement dealer out there? No. I mean, they happen to be there now, but we're, we're not going to kick them out. But Well, I think you'll see both of them. Well, no, for one, it's going to move, and I bet the other one's going to be moving soon, too. I, I mean, I would argue that we don't want a swimming pool in a baseball field out there, either. <laughs> well, I think it's hard, because at the time this was written, truck probably, I'm thinking truck meant bigger truck than what, like, we look at trucks as almost automobile side, so I can see, that, okay, we have a Mack truck yeah. group that wants to come in. Do we want that? No, probably not. That, you know, so it's just hard to start picking now on a bunch of different things. But that's the point. I mean, right. the thing really needs to be redone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go back and change it again here. Well, wait, we don't want to pick and choose, though, because when we start, if we're going to recodify all of these zoning things, we're going to get somebody, to a, a consultant, to work with us. I mean, when we try to pick and choose and, and, pick, a, and pick a problem we want to address, that's what we're trying to do this this time. Pick a, a couple of issues that we want to address. If we're going to recodify and, and describe things differently by not listing 27 different things that we think would pretty much fit, we will describe things like things that have multiple cars coming and going for retail business. Or, um, But everybody gets served now by semis unloading them. And so you almost have to have C2 provide a component to acknowledge that you're going to have your stuff delivered in a giant semi because everybody's getting it delivered in a giant semi, which is why we did C1 to take out the businesses that need giant semis to make that more like the, the, the office district and that kind of thing. This one is still kind of a catch-all when it comes to commercial. It's the most broad commercial zone we have for that reason. And that, that it makes it tough to make decisions about what we don't want in that. And so I, if, I mean, the other part of that is if you want us to put in warehouse and storage units as a special provisional use, that gives a case-by-case -case analysis for it with the idea that we know it belongs in M1 because we're going to put it in M1. 
but we can still consider it at times in a C2 use depending upon what the circumstances are. And that would be kind of solve the issue of we have to say yes or no to it at, at, as the circumstances that are presented to us at the time. Or not. <laughs> you know, the way it's, that's, that's, it's a good discussion because it's, it's one of these things that we struggle with because um, we've got areas that we'd like to see developed in a certain way. If you're developing these layers with commercial on the front and then, and then uh, residential behind, and you want to layer back, you know, from high density to low density. You don't want warehouses and storage units at the beginning because that's not going to really invite that, the, the rest of that layering and the rest of that development. Bill and Isaac, what do you need that we haven't given you tonight? Well, if, if what I'd like to see is if you, I, I have no problem with taking out what, what Heidi suggested down through painting shop and not putting that, uh, leaving it in C2 and not putting it in M1, and then putting the rest of that, taking it out of C2 and putting it in an M1, and then um, not do the special provisional use at this time, and if we find we need to do that, we can do that. Um, you know, it's easy to add in spe the, the, to the special provisional use, because all I have to do is add it to the, the one we already have there for indoor storage. So we could make that a catch-all with uh, storage-type facilities or warehouse-type facilities could be considered on a special provisional use basis and just add that to that spot. I'm okay with that, I think. Yeah. That, that would probably satisfy the people who say, wait a minute, you can't take that out of there. I mean, I think it just gives us a case-by-case -case, because sometimes it's going to be appropriate and sometimes it's not. How long do we mean when we have when we have to decide that? When somebody this meeting in. or that council meeting? Well, no, when, the, when the somebody comes in and wants to use that special provisional use, uh, when we've had some of those in the past, yep. it yep. gets off whole lot. Sometimes they're tough. Yeah, yeah. sometimes they're... But sometimes people don't feel that strongly about it, and they may say, it looks fine to me, you know? Yeah, but there's some that come in that, you know, they're hell-bent on wanting that special provisional use, and... Uh. Yep, I know. But again... If we put it in M1, like I suggest, so if we're putting the fact that we consider a warehouse and many storage units to be an M1 use, then we're saying that's where they normally belong. You have to give us a circumstance why we're allowing it in C2. And it could be because it's so a So in that condition, we take the warehouse and mini storage, put it in M1, M1? M1. But it's can still be discussed under the special provisional use of C2. C2. Right. But only if we put it in there, right? If we put that in there. So that, we have to add that to special provisional uses. Right. I would, and we would just add warehouse, warehouse uh, buildings and mini storage buildings. But by virtue of the fact that it's in M2, M1, that's, yeah. or M1, that's the standard place we expect it to see it. Right. But special circumstances, we may go, yeah, right. Yeah, because it may be connected to a retail this establishment and it's back off the you know I mean it just depends on on where it is sure. and on the on the site and and what the purpose of it is and what they're putting it there for, or you have a location that we have a circumstance and I won't tell you what it is because I don't want to, but there's a there's, there's an area that something is a C two that doesn't have direct access to the road, it has to be accessed kind of the back way, <laughs> and so that might be the perfect place to put in a little bit of storage units you know, in a C2 district because of that reason. It doesn't, it won't lend itself to much anything else. And I, and I, that's why I, I kind of get myself to support that special provisional use idea that we can consider occasionally looking at C2 for those purposes, depending on the circumstances, instead of trying to pigeonhole an M1 right next to a C2 and, and playing with that, that kind of a scenario where we're doing it as zoning instead of as a special provisional use. So I would, we, I would suggest that if we did that, we would just say we were going to add not just indoor storage, but mini storage and warehouse facilities could be allowed by special provisional use. And that would be that process we do on the back side of the, right there. Number three to that, you need to take the machinery dealers and the 
large trucks and throw them in the special provisional use too. Yes. I, I'm, I'm okay with, I can bring it back next month. We'll, we'll bring it back next month. Because I'd rather, we're, we're kind of making so many changes. I'd like to have you see it first. I think I'd kind of like to see it cleaned up. Have yep. been. I think it gives you the opportunity to, to see this yep. on, the, on the tape and sort out. Because there's been a lot of good ideas here. It, I think it's helped us a lot. I think when we look at that, we, we know the concerns. And so we can kind of, we still get the idea that we really want them over here, but if, if it works over here and, and everybody agrees it works over here, you, there's a process to get them over here. I guess I somewhat I think I agree with what Dave is saying, though. It, the more exceptions we make like that, the more difficult it is to really hold our zoning plan in place, too. And it just, I don't know. I think it makes it cloudier, more difficult at times. The, the, so either we know of this one instance where it might make sense. I'll, I'll tell you the the, the, the warehouse idea. It, it, it goes hat, um, hat in hand with some of the retail uses we're talking about. So if you have a furniture store, we don't want them to have all of their warehouse storage on on site. I mean, you think of a warehouse company that might have some storage, and then they have another place where they have a lot of storage. So Would you wouldn't take a Slumberland building? I mean, they're, all their storage is right in the back of their retail area. And so that we're may, saying, no, we wouldn't that's, do that? No, that's where your, your special provisional use would say, yeah, it's mostly retail all up front, and you're on the back side putting your storage, and so it works. I mean, Here it's it, a furniture store. But you also have to look at what's the primary use. Is it The primary use is to get people retail mm -hmm. exposure and frequent. So it, it, to me, that's more of a re retail that has some storage ca capability in it. So it's not like a standalone storage type um, use. It's so it could be in C2. Yes. OK. Yep. And the two guys, the same kind of thing. That's a clear C2 use because that storage is because they have their retail space up front. We want them to have people coming and going and, and often. So um, it, and, and some people would have their storage somewhere else, but they can work their storage in to that location. I mean, market value is going to drive some of that. Yeah. That's, yeah, and some of those people, but it, what's important to them? If they want to be on 4th Street or if they want to be on Bremer Avenue and the East or West End or whatever, they, they want to make sure that they're visible. So that's a retail purpose in that in my mind because if you have a warehouse that can be anywhere why would you pay the extra cost yeah to of be being in those locations mm -hmm. yeah we'll, we'll bring it back I think that's a good good way of doing it let's go around for any last words before we close this uh, this session Heidi anything anything we, we exhausted it. <laughs> well, okay. Just check. Dave, anything else? No. Okay, so we'll look to hear back from you at the October meeting. Yeah, yeah just um, what do we do? Do we, do, um, do we need a motion to table the issue? I'll move to table it. Okay. okay. I'll second. I don't think you need to vote on that, do you? Mm -hmm. And table it to the next meeting, I think yep. that's the way you put it. Yeah. Right. Good. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any old business? Hearing none. Any new business? Do we have a motion to adjourn? We have. Uh, staff's actually got some new business. Um, at the time, right now, we, since I've gotten to the city, um, we've kind of identified some other parts of the code that need cleaning up, whether it's just clarification, um, making them readable and understandable for staff. Uh, so. And we might not be bringing specific codes to the next uh, October meeting, but this winter it's staff's intention to be bringing some different code changes. I, th um, I think as you go through it, just keep introducing it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's probably a never ending. Yes. <laughs> yep. Condition. He's finding a lot of things he'd like to change. Yeah. Well, well no, if there's that good. much, or would we would be maybe smart to bring a consultant in to recodify. Well, when we're ready to spend there, some money, you're talking about, but I mean, we, we we will consider that. I mean, most of this stuff is just 
the things that he's seeing are, are why we did this or why this is kind of this way. Mm -hmm. And they're not major changes. They're kind of tweaks and, yep. and different. Yep. So, so for like one example, we've got um, something that we'd like to do is we've got some code uh, concerning like corner lots and different um, and residential areas. Um, one thing that we've considered is putting in a visual so that it's easier for us to explain to uh, citizens and easier for citizens to understand it uh, where street side yards are, where front yards are, where side yards are, and that type of things. And that's only for corner lots. Um, there's a part of the code describing uh, the allowable width of a residential property. And it's poorly written to the point where staff has a very difficult time understanding it which in turn makes it very difficult for us to explain it um, so it's clearing up stuff like that um, I think that's pretty much most of what um, we found thus far but there there might be some years ago or probably about yeah at least track it's a lot that goes faster yeah 10 years ago no I should be encouraged it was a corner lot yeah, really we had a big discussion on it, it was, no. Mm -hmm. Be encouraged. We, we've got to continue. And then there's way we there, there's some corner lots that have been developed, and we we want to make sure that everybody's consistently treated in the future, mm -hmm. and and identifying what's the frontage and, and it's, the it's not the normal frontage, yeah. you yeah. know, because it's wider. If we're going to do because in R two you can have duplexes, and you can have um, zero lot lines, <coughs> so we have to make provision for that, and those are things we need to fix. I think for me, I'm starting to feel like I'm almost lost in the the strategy or the, the sure. overall. So it's hard, like, when you're proposing things like that, um, making sure that they're not, like, significant changes until we can look, I think, more closely at it. Because I feel like I'm somewhat lost at times. And if we're going to pick pieces here and there, that they're more clarification versus maybe changes or mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Today, C2 and M1, <laughs> just like, okay, I have to look at the whole thing again and understand how it all fits together. So. What you get next year was the plan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That'll at least help again, because it's several years. It's so like, usually when we're looking at this, we're just looking at a piece of that. We're not looking at the whole C2. Mm. And so it's mm. easy to forget the other parts of it or to not remember that. Yep. So, but that's just, I don't think about this day to day. So. Anything else for the good of the order? I say we adjourn. We're done. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks.